Uh, who has more to prove this season, Jaden Ivey or Jalen Dern, in your opinion? Jaden Ivey because he's 22 and Dern's 20. Um, that might not seem like that big of a difference, but in reality, when you're talking about NBA players, when they typically break out, when they – I don't think either of them will, but when they typically fizzle out, it's just a lot easier to justify a 20-year-old moving sideways in, uh, you know, improvement and development than it is a 22 year old. Um, when we're going into this season, I think, uh, Duran turns 21 in November. Hypothetically, if Duran stays more or less the same, what he was last year, a 13 point 11 board guy who needs some work defensively. It's pretty easy to talk yourself into the fact that he's only 21 years old going into next year. Versus if Ivy shows us that he's the same player that he was last year, even despite Monty and him, that whole thing, him being in a lot of different roles, things like that. I think that's a bigger, maybe not an issue, but more of a, maybe this is who Ivy is rather than with Darren. It's more of a, he's still 20, 21. Uh, let's just give it some time. So I think right now it's Ivy, but at the same time, it's not like either of these guys are do or die if they have a bad year or don't develop substantially. We have to, uh, you know, light the house on fire here. Uh, you know, I think that it's just, it'll be fine either way. But if there's one guy that I would say probably has a little bit longer of a leash, it'd just be Duran because his age, really. So I'm going to take a different, uh, approach to this because this is where I think a lot of fans are going to hear this conversation. I'm getting them uh, ready for it because it's August. Both of these guys are contract extension eligible going into the next summer. Okay. Yeah. You cannot keep all of these young guys. You, you just can't. I think both of them have areas where they need to improve. I think you, you hit a lot of nails on the head with Duran. He needs to improve defensively. Now, is he going to get the $200 million contract that Cade got, him or Ivy? Probably not, no. I don't think so. Um, unless they just come out like crazy. Like if Duran's blocking like two and a half shots, then yeah, maybe you have those conversations. If Ivy comes out scoring 20-plus points a game, sure. To me, I think Duran has more to prove because I don't honestly think that I know some people in the community think that, you know, Dern's a lock to be the, this franchise center for the next 10 years. I'm not entirely sure. I think the Pistons need to see some development and growth defensively because last year was just atrocious, if, if I'm being honest. Like, defensively, he even admitted to Vinny Goodwill, at the select team, that he wasn't trying. He said, it wasn't my ankles, wasn't my injuries. It was, like, it was an effort thing. I wasn't trying. And... I like that he took accountability in that, but at the same time, I'm like, why weren't you giving effort on the court last year? Like that, that's that's kind of a red flag to me. Um, get kind of getting back to it. I I, I think it's Duran. I think with Ivy, the questions I have with him is just consistency, and can he fit with Cade Cunningham? I'm not sure. That's that's a whole other conversation and a whole other you know rabbit hole you can go down. I I think they can fit, but Ivy has to be more of a consistent shooter. But I I, I think it's Duran. He has way more to prove, in my opinion, because I think there's more question marks with Jalen Duran than there is Jaden Ivey. Jaden Ivey is mostly just fit and being consistent. Duran, it's just like, do we need to go get another center? Do we need to get someone that can protect the rim? Because, you know, when you came in as a rookie, you were protecting the rim. Don't know what happened there. You go into your sophomore season, different coach from Casey to Monty, you regressed a lot defensively. So I think, in my opinion, it, it has to be Duran. Yeah, for sure. And see, that's the tricky part with both of these things because, like you said, Dern has showed the ability to protect the rim not only in his rookie year. I mean, it wasn't world-class, but he was doing it a lot better than he was towards the end of the last season. And at the start of this season, too, in those first couple of games, the one against Charlotte, the one against the Bulls where he won, he was making an impact defensively. Same thing with Ivy. The big question with him is can he cut down the turnovers and can he shoot the ball a little better? We've seen him do those things, just not for – consistent stretches of time we've seen both of those guys do those things just not for a consistent time so really at this point it's just who can figure out how to make the best version of themselves the version that you get every night and then there's your answer you know on 
Yeah, I, I will say, I think when you talk about contract extension, I think both of these guys could easily clear $100 million. Like some people say, like, well, we're just going to give them what like, we gave Isaiah Stewart. I think Isaiah Stewart honestly gave the Pistons kind of like a discount. And I know yeah. he gets so much hate in the community, and I don't – I understand it, but I don't agree with it because I still think he's a good rotational player. I don't think he should be your starting power forward. I think he should be exactly. kind of like an, an energy guy off the bench, maybe a backup exactly. center, backup power forward. I think that's more of where he can carve a role in the league. But would not surprise me if the Pistons offer Jalen Dern a $100 million contract extension going into next summer. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if you hear talks about Jaden Ivey possibly uh, getting a hundred million dollar contract extension with the Pistons because I think both of these guys are extremely talented. It's just you have to ask yourself, what do we value more? Do we value a guy that could be a fifteen to twenty point per game score that can get to the basket at will, or do we value a guy that doesn't look like he's twenty? He looks like he's chiseled. He's so huge as a twenty year old. He can't even legally drink. You see all the tools, you see the comps coming out of college. Everyone thought this was like the next Dwight Howard. Like you have to ask yourself, what do you value? Because you cannot keep both of these guys on the roster if you're serious about winning, if you're serious about making the playoffs. And that's the conversation I want fans to kind of, I know it's kind of putting salt in the wound and kind of being negative, but you financially cannot afford to keep all of these young guys. Someone is going to be a casualty. Yeah, especially when you start talking about Asar and Ron and start thinking long-term vision with this stuff, then it gets way more convoluted. And like you said, with Stewart's contract, the last year on it's a player option. It's really not a bad contract at all, and I think he was just miscast, which is why you get that reaction from a lot of fans and things like that. And in my mind, if either of these guys can get retained on contracts similar to that, I don't think that ties our hands whatsoever, and it almost mm -hmm. might be a blessing long term, right? Uh, yeah. Where I mean, you don't want this to happen, but if uh, either of these guys de de develop sideways and don't get much better this year, and they end up resigning a Stewart contract for fifteen million dollars a year, that's maybe not the worst thing in the world, as crazy as it sounds. But uh, you know, that's almost like a almost like a second option, like plan B, right? Obviously, yeah. we want these guys to get better and get better fast so we can not be bottom feeders. So that's not the ideal situation, but it's uh, maybe maybe a glass half full vision if things mm -hmm. don't work out as well as we want them to. Yeah, I, I just think you wasted a whole year last year with Ivy because if you would have started him right off the gate, I think you we could have more of a conclusive opinion about can Jade Nivey and Cade Cunningham fit you wasted all last season on that because he has had to change his role his past two years he went from playing with Cade for 12 games to being the starting point guard to being a six man behind Killian Hayes who's trying to fight for a roster spot with the Brooklyn Nets right now like in my opinion I think you wasted a whole year of development and a whole year of questions at the front office and the organization may have needed answers to and I, I think this year right now is just going to be a year of evaluation for Trajan Langdon because he didn't draft these guys the only guys he drafted are Ron Holland and Bobby Clipman so he doesn't really have any ties to any of these guys in the organization so I, I think it's going to be really interesting I mean I've, I've even seen like some beat reporters kind of float out like why don't you trade these guys now while they have value like you don't want to hold on to them for too long because that's something that the Pistons do so much like Andre Drummond is the first player I think of like we couldn't trade him for multiple years and then we get a second because we, we just had to get rid of him yeah definitely and then there's the other side of the coin too where we did get rid of guys that turned out to be great but it wasn't first round lottery picks it was the other side of the spectrum the Chris Middletons of the world so you get fans that also want to hold on to these guys forever just so they don't get burned and have a Chris Middleton situation or even Dinwiddie when we Bruce Brown, you know, you can go on. So I get both sides of it. And truthfully, just as the fan in me, like I'm I'm already sold on both of these dudes and most of our mm -hmm. young core that it's really hard for me to like want to ship them off. I know it seems like every Pistons fan has one guy that they're down on and they always are screaming at the top of their lungs. We need to dip out on them ASAP. Yeah. I don't have that guy on the roster. I really do believe in the core is individuals. The fit, that's another question. And like you said, we just don't have answers to the 
fit between Ivy and Cade. And it just wasn't showing last year. There was not that many times where I can think back of last year where Cade and Ivy were sharing the floor and I saw them together and thought, wow, they're playing off each other so well right now. But there also wasn't many times where I saw them on the floor together and I thought that it was a disaster. What I do know is the few games where Cade was out and Ivy went back to his rookie year role of being the main ball handler, that's when we saw some of those huge outbreak games. I think one was against the Kings on a West Coast trip where Cade was out and Ivy took over. So that is like something but it's also not much so yeah i i like i said i i get both sides of the coin i i just i, I want to prepare pistons fans because th these conversations are going to happen like I, I was reading an athletic article from a, a national guy and he said who's to say that the, the pistons can't sell off on all th three uh members of their core they mentioned the sar ivy and and like who's to say they can't you know trade off all three of these guys because you know, Trajan didn't draft these guys. Maybe he wants to bring in his guys. Maybe he wants to bring in veterans. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see what happens in the preseason. And that seems like so long away. I think another month or so, month and a half until yeah. the preseason happens. But um, again, I, I, I think it's Duran has more to prove. I, I think with Ivy, I have a good understanding of what he could be in the league. I think he could either be a guy that you talk about as possibly a 20 point per game score. Or, you know, the low end, maybe he's a sixth man. Maybe he's just one of those guys that just comes off the bench and just lights it up offensively. Um, but, again, I, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with both of them.